In this video, we're going to talk about checking the assumptions for Cox proportional hazards model. Now, in the previous video, we were working with the Stanford heart transplant data, looking at survival after having a heart transplant. Now, the model that we fit there was looking at estimating survival as a function of age, as well as T5 score, which is a numerical measure of the degree of mismatch between donor and recipient. Larger T5 score indicated a larger mismatch. We also had a separate video where we explained what all of the assumptions of Cox proportional hazards model are. Here we're going to focus on checking two of them. How to check linearity as well as how to check the proportional hazards assumption. And again in a separate video we talk about implementing solutions if these assumptions are not met. So first let's talk about checking the linearity assumption. If you recall we assume that the relationship between any of the numeric x variables and the log hazard is linear. Now we can check this assumption in the same way we check linearity in other models like linear regression or Poisson regression. To do so we can look at a residual plot. On the x-axis we're going to plot the predicted values and on the y-axis we're going to plot the residuals. Now with survival analysis there's a few different types of residuals. We're going to look at using the martingale residuals but you'll see the same thing show up if you check the deviance residuals. So here we're going to, rather than using a built-in function to get the residual plot like we did with linear regression, we're going to build this plot ourselves. So here we're going to plot on the x-axis the predicted values from this Cox numeric model. On the y-axis we're going to plot the residuals and we're going to ask for the martingale residuals. Then I'm just going to add in an x label, a y label, as well as a title for the plot and the LAS equals 1 argument rotates the values on the y-axis. So let's take a look at that plot and what I'm going to add in there is a horizontal line at 0 so I'm going to add a line across the residuals equals 0 axis and then I'm also going to fit a smoother through those points. So I'm going to fit a red line that tries to smooth out the shape of those points. Now we can see here there's a bit of non-linearity showing up and just for the sake of completeness we can also check the same plot but using the deviance residual. So here I'm going to plot the predicted values versus the deviance residuals. I didn't bother to add in nice labels on these X or Y labels on this one. And I'm going to add in the horizontal line at residuals equals zero and then fit a smoother through those. And again we can see a little bit of a non-linearity showing up there. Now the approach to addressing non-linearities, we talked about these throughout the course and we have the same set of solutions available to us. We could identify the variable that's nonlinear, and we could try categorizing it, including polynomial terms, maybe transforming it. So the solutions are the same as they've been throughout um, our approach to regression models. Now, let's talk about checking the proportional hazards assumption. There's a few ways that this can be done. It can be done by producing a C log log plot. We're not going to discuss that in this video, although we do have R code available in some of the scripts that show you how to do that. Here we're going to look at using Schoenfeld's test for proportional hazards. This test has a null hypothesis that the hazards are proportional right, or that the hazard ratio is constant over time versus an alternative hypothesis that the hazards are not proportional or that the hazard ratio is not constant over time. Now doing this test is going to return a test for each of the individual variables or each of the coefficients as well as a test for the overall model. The command to do this test is cox.zph that's for Cox proportional hazards test and we're going to do it on the cox.num model. So let's look at asking R for that test. Now here we see the CHISQ is the test statistic for the age variable, for the T5 score variable, as well as global which is for all the variables at once. We can see we return the P or the P value for each of these and all these are larger than 5% so we have some evidence that we're going to fail to reject the null or that we might be able to work with the hazards being proportional assumption. We can also take a look at a plot of this test that's going to help us see things a bit more clearly. So let's take a look at doing that. So the plot that we're going to look at looks at if we allowed the coefficients to change over time or if we allowed the hazard ratios to change over time, what changes would we see? So if the coefficient does not change over time, we're going to expect to see a change of zero. So let's take a look at what shows up in the plot and I can expand on what I'm trying to say here. So since we have two variables in this model, age and T5 score, we're going to get two plots returned when we ask for a plot 
of this test. If we want to see all those plots on the same screen at once, we can split the plotting screen into, um, here I'm going to split into two rows and one column. So having two plots stacked on top of each other. So let's enter that. Now here the command is asking for a plot of the cox.zph test. So it's the same test we did before, but we're now asking for a plot of that. Now we can see it's telling us the figure margins are too small, and that's just because this plotting window here is a little bit small. So let me just increase the size of that and ask for it again. Okay, again, it's a little bit squishy to see what's going on here. If you wanted to, you could increase the size of this and rescale things a bit to get a clearer look. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at these plots one by one and talk about them. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is put the plotting screen back to one by one, or having one plot on the screen at a time. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask R to plot the cox.zph test, and in the square brackets there, I'm asking for just number one, or give me just the first plot. So here we can see the first plot. Now what's being shown in this plot, the solid line in the middle is looking at if we allow the coefficient for age to change over time, right, which is essentially mean allowing the hazard ratio to change over time, if we allowed it to change, how much of a change would we see? So a change of zero, right, we can see there zero on the plot, a change of zero would mean there is no change. Right? So the coefficient for age is not changing over time or the hazard ratio is not changing over time. The solid line is fitting a smoother through if we allowed this to change over time, how would it change? The dashed lines are a confidence interval or confidence bands around that. So I'm gonna add in a line, a red line at zero to see how often is a change of zero contained in this interval. Now we can see for this one, the change seems to be zero sometimes, right? The red line of zero is in those 95% confidence bands for about two thirds of the time, but sometimes it's not. So this assumption the proportional hazard assumption for age is a little bit suspect here. Now let's take a look at the plot for the T5 score. Here, I'm gonna ask R to plot the cox.zph test, and this time in square brackets, I'm gonna put two, or I'm gonna ask it to give me only the second plot. So again, we can see the plot here, and I'm gonna add in the red line at zero. Now here, in this plot, we can see the red line of zero, which would indicate no change, is falling within the 95% confident bands pretty much the whole time. So here we can see the coefficient for T5 score isn't really changing over time. For this one, the proportional hazards assumption definitely seems to be met. Now, working with these plots takes a bit of time and a bit of practice to feel out exactly what's going on with them, and maybe a little bit of reading to understand it a little bit more deeply than we can do in this short video here. If the proportional hazard assumption is not met, for a certain variable or variables. The solutions available were discussed in a separate video, but let's quickly remind ourselves here. One option is we can stratify on the variable which the proportional hazard assumption is not met for, or another option is using time-dependent coefficient models. And essentially this is allowing the effect of that variable to interact with time or to change over time. We won't get any deeper into those topics here in this video or in this course, but you can read a little bit more about time-dependent coefficient models okay, or time-dependent parameter models if you want to dig into this a little bit deeper. Now, final closing note, the R code that is below here, there's a little bit more code exploring some of this stuff a little bit more in depth if you want to dig into that on your own for your own sake. Stick around, guys. There's more to see it, and please stay safe.